So, hello and good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you happen to be listening to this recording. Welcome to the Duke of Edinburgh's Award Programme, which we run here at White Sixth Form College. The purpose of this session is to give you an introduction to how we run the programme at the college, what's involved, what you will be doing, and also to give you some idea of the costs and paperwork aspects, which are not particularly onerous, but this information that you do need to know and it's information you do need to ensure that any parents or guardians are aware of. So we shall move on to how the programme is delivered. You will be timetabled to complete one 60 minute session per week. These sessions will include information on the various DOV sections. They'll include instruction on how to use the eDOV platform, which you will use to record your achievements. And also will be an opportunity for us to cover a lot of the training that needs to be completed for the expedition section, of which more in a few moments. Your sessions will be led by a member of staff who is a Duke of Edinburgh's Award Leader. This member of staff is there to help you, to give you advice, and also to deal with any, help deal with any problems that arise. Because there are costs involved, the first two weeks are a taster for you. You can decide after those two weeks that you may or may not want to continue. If you do continue, then payments will be required to be able to register you for the DOV Gold Award. Your DOV staff consists of the following. Sarah Thackeray, who is by day a chemistry and applied science teacher, is the Duke of Edinburgh's Award Manager here at the college. Sarah's responsibilities for DOV are based around the administration of the award, including sorting out any registrations, sorting out trips for the activities that we will need to complete outside of the normal college day, and doing various other things that you won't see, but they need doing anyway. David Pickering is a member of our learning support staff, and he is a Duke of Edinburgh's Award Leader and Expedition Supervisor. Alistair Rigg, by day a science technician, is also a Duke of Edinburgh's Award Leader and Expedition Supervisor. Your sessions will be led by either David or Alistair. Very occasionally Sarah might step in. And if you have any questions in the first instance, please direct them to David or Alistair. If you can't, for any reason, direct the question to them in class, then please email them. You will also encounter other staff, both teaching staff and support staff, who will be out with us on our various training activities and who will be helping to deliver the programme for you. So, the DB Gold Award itself. We only run at Duke of Edinburgh's Gold Award here at the college. And that means there are five sections for you to complete. Some of you may have completed the Bronze Award or even the Silver Award, either at school or through a youth organization of which you're a member. So you will be familiar with four of these sections. The five sections to complete in the Gold Award are volunteering, physical, skills, a residential section, which is unique to the Gold Award, and the expedition section, which is the section that most people identify with the DOV scheme. Most of you will be what are termed direct entry, which is to say you have no experience in the Duke of Edinburgh Award prior to taking up this programme at the college. This makes no difference to the activities that you will complete. However, it does have some implications 
for the length of time that you will be required to spend on them. The Duke of Edinburgh's Gold Award is not a race. You have until your 25th birthday to complete all aspects of the award. You can complete the sections either concurrently, in other words, do them all at once, or you can do them consecutively, one after the other. Or you can do a mixture. You could choose to spend time doing one section, have a rest, and then do another section. It is entirely up to you. It is in your program. So let's look at the sections. We're going to start with the volunteering section. The volunteering section aims to inspire you to make a difference. It is about giving up your time to do something useful in an unpaid capacity. This can be done in your local community, for example, helping out at community library, village hall, church hall, etc. With a group such as a organised uniformed organisation or perhaps a club for elderly people uh, or for an individual. Perhaps somebody in your local community needs assistance with something for a short period each week. The guidance that is given is that you must do this regularly for at least an hour. By regularly, we mean just about every week, but not necessarily every week. We understand that there will be occasions where you will have other commitments, such as college deadlines, or you will be ill, or you may be on holiday. In some circumstances, it may be that not doing it that week is down to the group that you're involved with. Such as a charity shop, for example, might be closed over Christmas. The physical section aims to promote greater physical fitness and a healthy lifestyle. This can be virtually anything that reflects your interests, your talents and your capabilities. You should view this as an opportunity to try something new, either independently or as part of a team. One thing to remember with the physical section is that you need to be realistic about what is available to you. You should choose an activity which is accessible, both in that there is a provision for it that you can get to quite easily and that you can actually get to. So, for example, if you want to take up skiing, that's fine, but be sure that you can actually go somewhere each week to participate in that activity. Similarly, if you are dependent on public transport, then you need to be sure that you can use that public transport to access somewhere. If you live in Roos, out in the East Riding, for example, then can you get to swimming pool in Hornsey to do your swimming activity? Similarly, if you want to take up American football, is there an American football team? Moving on to the skills section, this is about developing practical skills based around your personal interests. And the choice of activity is limited only by you. It can be something that is fairly standard, such as astronomy, uh, baking, cooking, knitting, or it can be something that's very, very, very arcane. My particular favourite from the list of ideas that the DAB provide is snack pimping, which it turns out is where you bake a very large version 
of something that is otherwise quite small, like a jammy dodger. Again, these activities can be undertaken on your own or as part of a group. Again, as a caution, you should be sure that you're going to be able to participate in this activity and that there is a provision or if it's something you can do at home and be sure about what cost implications are. Playing darts is fairly standard and you should be able to access something like that quite easily. However, if the only darts team in your area is at a local pub, you might find that that's a little bit inaccessible for somebody your age. Be realistic, please. If in doubt for either skills or physical or indeed volunteering, please speak to either David or Alistair, or if they're not available, get in touch with Sarah. The residential section, which is the gold award only section, aims to take you out of your normal surroundings. So it gets you out of the college, it gets you out of your local youth club, it gets you out of the cadet group that you're in, and it takes you out of your comfort zone. And by that, we mean we send you some, you go somewhere new, you go somewhere different. Ideally, away from your regular social group. The idea is that you're going to meet new people and participate in a shared activity with them. It can be based around volunteering or skills. It may also be based around physical, although this is less common. There may be a cost implication on this. However, it should not be the case that cost makes it impossible for you to complete this. There are many options out there that do not have high cost or indeed some options do not have a cost at all. Again, we can look at the DV website and you can find out about those opportunities. The expedition section is the section, as I've said before, that is most associated with the Duke of Edinburgh's award. It is an opportunity for you to develop your initiative, your spirit of adventure, and your teamwork skills. There are 20 conditions that must be met as part of your expedition section. These can be viewed on the DV website and there is an expedition training framework that we use to prepare you for it. We do not just chuck you out into the wild. The training will lead to a four day qualifying expedition in wild country. That's not quite as bad as it sounds. Wild country covers places such as the Peak District, the North Yorkshire Moors, the Yorkshire Dales and the Lake District. You will spend four days journeying on foot through such an area and you will camp out each night and no, you won't need a trowel. There will be showers and toilets at the campsites. Your programme is personalised to you and to your interests. And the staff are here to provide advice and assistance in helping you to decide the programme you're going to follow. As I've said before, it is not a race. You can decide that you wish to do a particular activity for your skill and spend the time that you are doing that just research, also researching activities that you could do for your physical activity. You may even want to spend a bit of time doing both and start a section at a later date. This is not a problem. Your DV leader will speak to you regularly about where your planning is and they will try to help you 
and signpost you to the right areas. If you have any problems or you want to try and find out more about a particular activity, do speak to your DV leaders. Your timetable sessions will cover mostly the expedition training framework. Showing on the slide is the broad content of the expedition training framework. You will need to learn some first aid. This will be covered by a separate course of which I will speak in a moment. Hazard management covers things like hazards that you will actually find on the ground, such as streams, bogs, scree on a hillside, and how to avoid these. It also covers things like the weather and how to avoid herds of cows. For your navigation and route planning, we will be covering all aspects of how to read a map, how to use a compass, and how to use a route card to detail what you intend to do on your journey. Campcraft will cover how to put up a tent and how to cook a meal. It will include teaching you the proper use of a trangia. Some of you may have experience of this already and that will come in useful. We will talk about various types of equipment as well. This will include group equipment such as emergency shelters and it will also include personal equipment. We will talk about waterproofs, walking boots, socks, acceptable clothing for actually walking in, rucksacks, and the use of hats, which a lot of people seem to forget about. We will talk about the nutrition for expeditions. There will be a lot of calories required for you to cover the distances that you will cover for four days. You need to be sure that you are eating the right things and getting plenty of energy. We will also cover the countryside code. Many of you will have some knowledge of this already, but we are going out into an area that for most of us, we don't live in. We are guests in those areas and we need to ensure that we do not cause an impact on people who do live there and their livelihoods. Your first aid training, you can either complete a first aid course at the college or you may qualify for an exemption and you need to see your DOB leader if you think you qualify for an exemption. To give you an example, if you have completed first aid training as part of your activities in one of the cadet forces, for example, the army cadets, and you have a certificate to prove it, then if you bring a copy of that certificate into and show your DOB leader, you can qualify for an exemption. If you don't qualify for an exemption, you should sign up for a first aid training session with Chloe, who is the college's enrichment coordinator. These will be a one day first aid course that will run at various times of the year. And when you have done this, you need to bring your certificate to your DOV leader who will be able to then verify that you have completed the training. Practice walks. <clears throat> you will need to complete a minimum of two of these. A practice walk is a day out somewhere such as the North Yorkshire Moors, where you will get the opportunity to practice your navigation skills and also to assess your fitness. I have not talked about fitness so far, but you do need to be fit enough 
to be able to complete the expedition without causing yourself any injury. However fit you are at the moment, there are plenty of opportunities for you to be able to improve this in the next year or two. So please think of this as a great opportunity to get out, enjoy the countryside and get fit at the same time. So this is the walks program for this year. Our first walk will be out on the Yorkshire Wolds on Sunday the 11th of October. This will be an opportunity for some of you to go out, get a little bit of experience of walking and map reading if you haven't got experience already. Okay, and we will do some navigation instruction which we will not get to do beforehand. In past years we have held a night navigation and campcraft evening where we've been able to camp out overnight. Again, because of COVID-19, this is not necessarily going to be possible, but we still expect that we might be able to run a night navigation and camp craft session, which will just take place for the evening without camping out. We expect that we may be able to provide this at some time in November this year, although it is to be confirmed. The final two practice walks have been penciled in for Saturday the 13th of March 2021 and Sunday the 21st of March 2021. Both of these will take place on the North Yorkshire Moors. So a quick note about the practice expedition. At the moment we are planning, COVID-19 dependent, on running your practice expedition in June next year. This will involve three days journeying across the North Yorkshire Moors on foot. Each night you will camp out and you will cook your own meals. You will be self-sufficient as a team. Your team will consist of between four and seven students, including yourself, and we will be there somewhere to keep an eye on you. This will involve seeing you at various times of the day and also watching you complete your route from a vantage point. So we'll go on to some money matters now. There are two payments. We've split it into two because of the uncertainties that are involved by COVID-19. The first £55 needs to be paid by the 2nd of October. This money will cover your registration with the Duke of Benefit Award and also cover initial activities such as any practice walks. The second payment will be approximately £60, however this is to be confirmed. And this will cover the costs that are involved in the practice expedition. Until we are able to confirm campsites and exactly where we're doing the practice expedition, we can't say for certain what those what the cost will actually be. But £60 or thereabouts is what we believe it will come to. Going back to money matters. For those of you who are in receipt of a bursary or think you are going to be in receipt of a bursary, then you need to email finance at wike.ac.uk stating that you wish to participate in the DV program here at the college and the finance team will then be able to advise in regard to what help is available via the bursary. If there are any other financial concerns, please contact your DV leader or the finance team. If we know about it, we can solve the problem. If we don't know about it, then we can't. Attached to your welcome letter, which contains all of the information that I'm going through just now, you will find a medical form. 
This needs to be filled in as completely as is possible and signed by your parent or guardian. When it's been completed, it needs to be taken to the reception desk in the Oak Building and handed to our central support team. Your parent or guardian can also email it to the central support team if this is more convenient. I must stress that if there are any changes to your medical situation, you need to submit a new form, which will be available from the DV staff. If we do not know about a medical situation, then we are, do not have the information we need should anything happen while we are out on activities, be it an expedition or a training activity. The information itself will be kept confidential. So I'm going to briefly cover now the, what you would expect to go on to in year two. In year two, you would continue working on your award, including any sections that you've started or any sections that you want to start. You will have the opportunity to do some more walks to hone your navigation skills. I would urge you, if you have the opportunity to do some in your own time. Most of us live in the vicinity of the Yorkshire Wolds or the Lincolnshire Wolds and there are some great walks to be had out there. You will spend your final year planning your four day qualifying expedition. The route, your menu and also an aim something you're going to use your expedition to do. You will end the year in 2022 by completing the qualifying expedition. And this usually takes place in July. Dates will be confirmed next year. So your next steps. Make your first payment in order to register on the DOE programme. When it goes live on parent pay, register for your first walk. Please do note that numbers are limited on these walks. If you do put down for it and you need to drop out for any reason, then please email a member of the staff to be able to get yourself taken off so that we can open the place up to someone else. Take the time over the next week or so to explore www.dov.org forward slash do. This is an opportunity for you to find out a little bit more information about the award and get some ideas about what you want to do. And that's your next step is to have a think about what you want to do on your program. This is about you having a go at something new, challenging and exciting. And finally, I've stressed this throughout this presentation but I will stress it again. Please do talk to us about any difficulties, any limitations or any concerns that you may have. If we don't know about it we cannot help you resolve the matter. Thank you for listening and I'll, I hope you have a great time on the DB Gold Award.